is a 123-year-old nonprofit that aims to create inclusive, thriving communities by inspiring, supporting, and recognizing equitable approaches to community decision-making. And I'm also joined here by my colleague, Carla Kimbrough, who is our Racial Equity Program Director. Um, so the All-America City Award is our flagship program, and it began in 1949, and we recognize 10 cities each year for exceptional civic engagement. Um, but we aim to not only celebrate this work, but also share the innovative practices that we learn about through this program. So we've begun this monthly webinar series to accomplish just that. Um, so we hope through this webinar, past webinars, and future webinars that we're able to equip you all, institutions, local governments, um, with models and insights that you all can take and adopt and adapt for your community. So we have two speakers um, today talking about their youth-led programming, and they are both All-America City Award winners. And we have Deirdre Love with Norfolk and Alejandra Silvia from Salinas, California. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Deirdre and turn it over to her as soon as we get her unmuted. Give me one moment. All right, Deirdre, can you hear us? Deirdre, are you on the line? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. I see our teenagers' pictures there. So uh, yeah. thanks for giving us this opportunity to um, share a little more about our organization, Teens with a Purpose, um, and uh, we are teens creatively cultivating the next generation of leaders. And just a little bit about us, I'm kind of going to read the screen, uh, what you're seeing right in front of you, but um, Teens with a Purpose is committed to building young leaders with positive who positively impact their neighbors, their classrooms, school, government, congregation, and one another, young people shaping and creating an inspired and positive world where dreams become reality and the impossible is made possible. And our mission is to create a platform that empowers young people to use their voice, creativity, reflection, and action to impact one another, their community, and to transform lives. So that's what we've been doing since uh, 1996. Here, give me the next slide, please. So, yes, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary, and I kind of mentioned our vision, creating a world um, where an inspired space, a positive world where dreams come true and, every, and everything is made possible for young people. And what's at the core of what we do is our core beliefs, and we believe that all youth matter. We believe that everyone has potential. We celebrate diversity. We believe artistic expression gives life to young people. We believe in empowering one another and supporting one another. We believe in community, and we believe that change happens through dialogue. Next screen, please. So we have um, our, our, we have various programs, and not just the ones listed on the screen, but these are the, the the pillars of the various programs that we offer. The first being peer leadership, and that is you know teen to teen leadership. Then our young people are trained by um, professionals in youth development and in the arts, but the goal is for their personal development and for them to become mentors to one another. And then our arts and humanities, as I mentioned, we use arts as a vehicle for change for our young people. So we have uh, Music Made Simple, and they, that's our music division, and they create original, inspiring music that talks to the issues that young people play, uh, face today. And then... Uh, we also have um, our Hampton Roads Youth Poet Division, and they are national champion poets, and our young people travel the country 
speaking, again, on topics that um, are important to young people and their uh, critical thinkers and just building their community and building up each other through um, through the poetry program. And we're, our poetry is also school-based, and we offer, also offer a Poet Laureate program, which falls under arts and humanities. We do a tremendous amount of community outreach all year, supporting other organizations, initiatives, as well as doing various projects with the Norfolk Police Department, um, doing service projects, um, for homeless teens and senior citizens, just really helping young people value giving back to their community. And then um, healthy teen and camps, we have um, a spring break camp and a summer break camp. Our teens are trained all year to facilitate those camps. The summer camp is a paid position for the young people, and we built a, a urban garden in the backyard and that's really getting us on the healthy eating and um, and also being more environmentally aware. Um, the next screen, please. And then um, peer education training. Some of the topics I, I mentioned is things that impact young people, including HIV, AIDS, and sexually transmitted disease, violence prevention, diversity. Um, conflict resolution, social justice. As I mentioned, we work with the police department, building relationships there, distracted driving, um, which happens to be a number one killer of teens, and homelessness are some of our major um, initiatives that our peer educators learn the, the important information about, and then they young it up with their poetry and music and their own um, peer-led um, facilitated workshops and events. And then uh, you can go to the next one. And then the arts and enrichment. I mentioned the Hampton Roads Youth Poets Travel, the country representing the Hampton Roads Youth Voice. We do a festival called Fuse Festival. Um, that is, last year we reached over a 1,000 people, and it was predominantly youth-led and youth inspired, but we brought the whole community in to celebrate our diversity and uniqueness. And that last picture with the young lady with the drums, we were supporting another organization's Kwanzaa event, just really using arts education as a way to enrich young people's lives. And what do we have next? And I mentioned the camp. That's our little backyard um, garden. We started with two uh, parking islands that were converted into raised beds. Now we have about 12 raised beds, and we're getting ready to branch out into an open lot, which is about, I think it's about a half an acre, and expand the garden to make it reach more of the young people. So, you know, our, our aim is to make the young people the leaders, um, make sure everything that we do is more than youth-centered, but youth-centric, so that it's what they like, and um, and it's happening. N the next screen, please. Uh, the community outreach, which happens to be my favorite part, because when we began in 1996, we started as an AIDS ministry at a church, and then 2007, we became community-based. So our community outreach starts with um, HIV education for young people. I mentioned the Fuse Festival. That's a community festival that goes on three times throughout the summer with a big event at the end. And that picture to the left is um, actually that the adult in the picture is running for um, uh, he's a le he's running for a legislator position in our state and. You know, we brought them to the teen center and we put them to work because we adopted the lots around our space, and so we cleaned that regularly. And so he wanted to engage our youth, and we engaged him first. And these are, are just a list of some of our annual, if you go to the next screen, some of our annual teen events over the year. That first one to the left was Metamorphosis, and that we took over our high school, and we did all teen-led workshops for teens, for parents. We had a stage presentation. Uh, the one that says Imagine Me was a multimedia production 
that they wrote the script. Uh, we worked with the uh, Norfolk State University uh, art department to teach them videography, so it was a multimedia event, and that later evolved into um, Fuse Fest that we have now and No Holding Back. But all of the events, they use original poetry, original music. They take on a um, pressing topic of the day and completely get educated on it, dissect it, present it back to their peers in a way that they understand it. And um, it's really engaging. It's all original, and it's youth-inspired and youth-led. And so we are Teens with a Purpose, and we're located in downtown Norfolk. We're at the Vivian C. Mason Teen Center, which is a city-owned facility where we are the lease partners providing free teen programming year-round in a blighted community that I, I like to believe that we help make shine. We're, we live here, and we love this city, and we love the work that we do, and our young people are the shining examples of what it, all the potential that's in every young person. You can see it demonstrated in the young people that are part of Teens with a Purpose. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Deirdre. I, uh, I'm going to open it up for questions, but I actually have one first. Um, okay. Your, your presentation at the 2016 All-America City Awards was so well done and so inspiring, and it truly was youth-led. Um, and so I would just love if you could tell the story of the young man um, who felt confident enough to call the police chief and kind of build that relationship um, for himself and his community. So I, you're talking about Malik. Um, he was being – so what had happened was there was – there are lots of teens that come to the center, and one of the teens, his name was uh, – his name is Michael. His cousin had gotten shot, and another teenager, not by a police, but she had been shot in an incident, and the police were involved in the incident, but they weren't the shooter. And Teens with a Purpose was in the middle of doing, um, helping someone with the event. I think we were doing like a rally. I don't know if it was Trayvon or it was a peace rally, and you saw a picture of that. Anyway, we were so distracted by trying to give out that we really weren't, doing anything about something that was hitting really close to home. And so after that peace rally and after all of that, the teens got together and said they wanted to do something about what was happening close to home because it's one thing to take care of others, but you really have to take care of yourself first. So the first thing they did, they all sat together and they all wrote out, they did something called a problem tree and they drew out in the, in, on this tree what they thought was the root problem, what did it stem from, what was, you know, the, the roots of it, where did it come from, what did it manifest in the outgrowth in the leaves. And um, so they had all of this, and I was like, can you all just write it up in an orderly way? And then when they, they wrote it up in, in an orderly fashion, and it had, you know, defined pretty much what they thought was happening, and then... I asked them to organize it into a way that would be what they wanted to do first, second, you know, the order. And once they got it together, that was when uh, they presented it to the chief of police. And, you know, and the first thing they asked for, they wanted a, a forum with the officers. And they wanted to facilitate this, and they wanted to engage the officers. And what he couldn't tell you was the first time that they did it, it did not turn out the way they had hoped. The first time we had it, the officers took, it seemed that it was taking more like a scared straight program, and so they were kind of aggressive, and our teenagers, that wasn't their spirit. So when it was over, we asked, all right, you asked for this. It didn't turn out the way you want. Do you want to stop now? Because you don't have to do the other things you asked for. It's up to you. What do you want to do? Are you in it to make something different, or do you want to just say, I tried and I'm done, and they said they wanted to keep going, even though their feelings were hurt and it didn't turn out well? And I can tell you they've 
um, the Norfolk Police Department, we've had, I don't know how many, at least 100 officers have taken workshops with our young people. They know them on the street. They have deep conversations using the poetry workshops. Who, who am, um, where I'm from, who I am, they call me, I call myself, where you get to talk about names that you're called and really, like, go deep into um, the individual so that black and blue don't exist and it's just humans in the room. And they've done a lot with that. And, um, in fact, in a couple of weeks we're going to have our spring break camp and the officers are going to come in and participate in the workshops with the young people, and they'll, um, you know, they they're going to build relationship again. And it's an ongoing process. It, it can't be done in a day. It's something you have to constantly work out. Teenagers keep growing up, and officers, new officers, come on the force. So, you know, the police department, as well as our organization, realize you have to just work at it continuously. Great. Thank you so much. And, again, I just absolutely love how youth-centric your programming is and, and the outcomes that you all are getting and relationships you all are building are really inspiring. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put everyone in Q&A mode. And so if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. You may also send me a question um, just to the host in the chat box, and we will have time for more questions at the end as well. And to unmute yourself, you can press star six or click the Q&A button. Okay, well, we will continue on with the presentation, and again, there will be time for questions of both presenters at the end. Okay, Alejandra, are you on the line? Alejandra, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Okay, okay. go right ahead. We've got your Prezi up now. Okay. Uh, well, welcome, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, thank you, dear, dear Jeff, for presenting about Youth with a Purpose. It was very um, meaningful, and I learned a lot, so thank you for sharing. My name is Alejandra Silva. I'm over here in Central California in Salinas, in a small town called Salinas. We're in um, Monterey County, and before I get started on the presentation, just to give you a little background on our city, just to like paint a picture of Salinas. Basically, um, I, I was born and raised here, um, and of course I've grown to love my community, which is why I do this work. Um, we are a town that um, is, has dealt with some challenges and um, main one, um, the root cause of it being basically race. And so we're um, primarily Latino community and um, our city is significantly divided just as many cities are um, by um, the south and the east side. And with that comes along the stigmas, the stereotypes, poverty, and some, and of course disparities. But um, I'm here with um, an organization called Building Healthy Communities, and um, Ciclo Via Salinas is one of our um, initiatives and and projects that we um, partner with young people in our from our high schools and really um, try to build their capacity while um, while also looking at the built environment and our, our overall community health and how, how we can support our community um, in changing the narrative and becoming a more healthy community. And so building, so I'm going to begin the um, slides of the presentation. Uh, are they ready to go? Okay. 
So we can actually um, move to the, the slide two. And just to give you a little um, background on what Ciclovia is, Ciclovia is, first of all, it's more than just an event. It, um, and that, that's the context that um, I see the work that we, they, that we do. Um, although traditionally it is known as an open streets project. And it's basically where um, a one central road or roadways are transformed into open public spaces for the community to come together, interact, um, recreate, learn about each other's culture and where we're coming from, and really just celebrate health and outdoor recreation. Um, and so th this is what, um, how we see Ciclovia here in Salinas. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so just to, um, the actual concept of Ciclovia was, is, was rooted in Colombia, Bogota, Colombia where that community identified, um, the city in Bogota identified the need to address community health through, and they thought that opening streets up for public um, recreation and biking would be a great um, way to do this every Sunday. And actually in Bogota, their ciclovia is, is every, I, I believe, every Sunday. So in Salinas, our history goes back to 2012, and I was not um, involved in the event at that, in that pro in the project at that time. But I've heard the history, and it's pretty um, inspiring. Basically, um, building healthy communities had already been working on some health-related um, projects in the community, um, such as like a 5K run and um, a health fair with their young people, with the high schoolers that they kind of outreach to and, um, and in try to engage in this movement for a healthier community. Um, and so they were presented the idea or, or they heard about the idea through a video that you could find on YouTube around, about Ciclovia in Bogota, Colombia. And this group of about I think it was at that time in 2012, it was only about 15 young people working with building healthy communities, but they decided, hey, um, our community could really benefit from event, an event and activity just like this. How often do we see people from the south side come into the east side and interact as one city? How how um, how do we uh, raise awareness ar around the resources and assets that are already in our community to everyone? Um, why are there less parks and open space on the east side for residents to recreate outdoors and there are more open spaces to recreate on the south side? So this was just the really the push and the realization to them that, hey, like I, I you know, they thought Ciclovia made sense for Salinas. And so since 2012 and since their initial, you know, work, the groundwork that the 2012 12 founding members did was outstanding. They, you know, went to City Hall. They advocated it for it. They um, began to build relationships with the Public Works Office of the City of Salinas. Um, they talked to the business owners associations, and they really, really um, pushed for this this idea and this one day event that would really unite the community. And that was their vision. And luckily, um, due to their hard work at the beginning. Um, Back in 2012, we've established some lasting relationships with the city. And um, each year, you know, the city does really help us put on this, this event. And so it's, it's a great partnership. You can go to the next slide. That was just a little bit of the history of Salinas. Um, I'm going to jump to a quick um, image of what our, what, um, what the, what the actual day kind of feels like. And so, Sarah, you can just click it. Apparently, there's no music, but this is, for example, a Zumba activity going on. And here we have some of the youth leaders in front trying to engage the community in the um, outdoor recreation activities. And so um, this is at a key point of, of our town because really that bridge you see there divides um, the east and the south sides. So it's a cool, it's a very unique day where this main roadway um, Alley South Street is open and um, community members from both sides of town mingle and enjoy the open space together. Okay. You can go to the next slide. 
So at the when um, the founding group of young of youth, uh, you know, decided to move forward with a Ciclovia event in Salinas, they identified, um, you know, the purpose, the goals, and the vision. And so, what, one of their goals, um, these are the five main goals of, of Ciclovia. And I, ideally, you know, there's always that health-related goal. We are a community that. Um, that definitely struggles with health-related diseases um, rooted from um, on access to un- un- unhealthy foods and poverty. So, you know, they were like, okay, let's get our health resources out there. Let's get this Ciclovia to be somewhat of a health fair. And so we actually do have the, the, part, the hospital that partners with us and is able to train some young people in helping them um, do surveys and give vaccines at the event, free vaccines to the community. So we really emphasize the health piece, the health piece of this. Additionally, I've mentioned um, the vision is, was to and is to unite the community. Um, it's, our, our town has been historically divided, and so this is one day we, we all try to come together. Um, are, are you all still there? And then um, lastly, we have – we can still hear you. Oh, I was just getting a call. And it, anyways, okay. Sorry. I was, I was Okay, back to the <laughs> – I'm with you here. Okay, so then lastly we have – or not lastly, um, Additionally, you know, from the beginning they knew we, they would have to partner with the businesses and the idea is that on the day of this event we're, we encourage local um, folks to buy local and so there's uh, many taquerias al- along the route and so we really try to partner with the businesses and ask what their needs are and how, how we can support them on this day and help them promote their business because, again, on the east side of Ali Sal, you have a whole bunch of small family business owners who, um, who, you know, this is their, this is their community. They're selling to. Um, uh, they don't usually get markets from the south side coming in, so we want to highlight their businesses and maybe help them build a better market that way as well. Additionally, um, we want to. We have a narrative change goal, meaning that um, you know we want to change the image of what people think of Salinas, of our city. We are. We're often. Um, stereotyped of, of, of to be a city of, of violence, and, and in reality, it is one of our challenges. Um, but we do this event truly highlights the the good work of Salinas, the people coming together, and really highlights the youth that put on this project and um, their good work being done and their dedication to this community. So we we really try to partner with the newspapers, the radio, and try to get the word out. Um, about this uh, about this activity, um, and then lastly, um, we have the use of leadership sk- uh, skill development piece, and so that that piece I'll talk a little bit more about um, in the next few slides. And that's exactly what we mean. What what I mean by it's more than an event; it's definitely a project, and it's it's an internship program for youth. So I will go through. Um, we can go to the next slide. The actual um, route, we were able to partner with the city and, and get um, 1.6 miles, um, you know, available for um, the, the community to recreate on this day together. So this is the route map, and then you can move on. And then at Ciclovia, you know, we invite community organizations, um, groups to come and broad, uh, show, showcase their um, asset their resource for the community. Um, and so like I said, Ciclovias are all around the world. There's in Guadalajara, there, there's one in Mexico City, there's one in Bogota, Colombia, there's one in San Jose, California called Viva Calle. So it's actually an open street movement. And so we, ours is very unique um, in that we really um, emphasize the, the youth internship piece. Okay. You can go into the next. So here we are at the internship phase of Ciclovia, and since the original idea um, to implement it in Salinas came from a group of young people, we've, car- we've been able to carry on the idea throughout the years, given that 
um, each year they are um, youth from various grades of high school. So it's really um, something that they enjoy to do together and something that they feel like they get a lot of, um, they get a lot from. So it's not a, an issue at all to recruit more volunteer, recruit more interns and, and really um, engage more young people. So down in the right corner, that's one of, that's at our, um, one of our resource centers, the Alice Hall Family, Re or sorry, the, um, it's one of the community art centers, and we use a facility similar to that where you see the circle of youth together um, for our meetings. And so beginning in June, we um, interns from the past year come together and begin to strategize um, how to recruit volunteers, um, what the plan for the what the what the internship experience will look like for their peers. And so usually a group of interns from um, the, the year before is able to step up into a leadership position. Um, we give them a captain position and they are a captain of a specific committee that's responsible for um, certain areas of the event. So I'll go into that. But um, yeah, so the internship begins in June and we usually do weekly get, uh, meetings and the event isn't, the actual day of the event isn't until October. But this is just some images of the youth coming together. You can go to the next one. Um, so just to give you an idea of uh, what, what kind of committees these captains are leading, so each captain um, or captains we have responsible for a piece of the event or a piece of the project. And so they spend the months before either, um, you know, if you're in the volunteers committee, there is a huge need to have volunteers at the event. So the, they gain their skills in public speaking because they have to learn and go out to the community and outreach events and really advocate for the event, explain it, and also recruit volunteers. And so we try to um, table at many community events and we find organizations that are willing to have us you know, present about Ciclovia and then ask for some um, community support with the event by volunteering at the event. And again, this is all done by the captains. Captains from years past train the new interns on how to how to talk about the event and and what the bigger picture is. Which um, and that's really an important key to the internship. I didn't mention before, but we like to. Um, to bring up the conversation like com around community health and how Ciclovia fits into that picture and how open spaces really do play an impact in the quality of life for people growing up in Salinas. And so they're able to articulate the event in that light as they go around into the community recruiting volunteers. Um, Additionally, we have logistics committee and that they're in charge of a lot of the details for the event. They check in with all the booths and activities that we've recruited and make sure that their needs are met on the day of the event. They also get to get to make decisions around what they do research on what, um, what food, you know, we should be serving, we should be having for our volunteers. And then they decide based on like their research what really makes sense economically. So they do a lot of the, la the details. They decide if we need generators, they also are able to communicate with the stage crew and like um, help that or, you know, if they're looking for music, um, music to play at the actual event, they're able to reach out. And so that's something that they learn from their peers, but also um, it takes a little practice. So in some of our meetings, um, they're centered around capacity building and practice. So obviously um, speaking in public and speaking to um, someone you don't know, strangers, is a, gain, is a skill that's gained. And so it takes practice. And so some of our meetings are dedicated to just that piece of like, okay, we have a presentation planned on this day. Let's practice. Let's build some um, skills. Let's um, do some trial and error on what we're going to say and how we're going to say it. So um, that's part of the logistics committee. And then we have the publicity group, which helps to um, helps to kind of um, go there. That's actually a really fun crew because they, they get to go and communicate on um, the radio. We have a local radio station, Radio Bilingue, and he really partners with, uh, with us throughout the event to have us on almost weekly um, giving um, updates and talking about the event to the community because that's 
in Salinas, the radio is a great source of news for many, many residents. So it's very um, fortunate that we have that opportunity. And the young people love going on the radio. It's very fun for them. Um, so they do that. They also help out with the flyer and anything. Um, you know, we've had reporters come in and want to interview the youth, and so that's, that's the piece of the publicity crew. And then, of course, we have activities, which they reach out to all the organizations, groups. They brainstorm who can bring life to this event, who do we think um, our community would like to learn about this year, what activities or groups would be willing to perform at this event. And so they really do a lot of brainstorming about their community asset mapping and figuring out what kind of events, they, activities they want there for the community to enjoy. And then they're making phone calls and they're sending out emails and they're um, doing all the groundwork in order to get um, send out the application and get our activity booths and resource booths there on the day of the event. So all this piece is um, that usually is done by like an event coordinator. It's actually, it's all done by the youth. And so, um, and it's fun, you know, they usually enjoy, um, enjoy doing this and, and um, the, the event is actually very rewarding. Okay, so you can go to the next slide. And so, of course, we like to broadcast what kind of, or of course, I'd like to shed some light on, um, you know, what kind of um, skills or um, civic engagement they would get from being part of Ciclovia. And so a lot of the youth, um, you know, they hear about it from their peers, and so this is their opportunity to a lot of, you know, we get, I love, you know, when we see new involvement, you know, freshmen who come in um, relatively shy and reserved, and then um, by the end, they're on the radio. And so we really, I've seen that in this last year, and I, I, I've seen that a few times in some of the young people. And so it's really encouraging, and they feel part of a bigger system, and they feel very connected to their peers. You can tell it's also, a, so it's, you know, the key part, I think, of youth, force, youth, youth work, too, is making it a social and a healing space for young people. So we really do focus on building relationships. Um, even after and before the event, we continue that relationship piece because um, it's just nice to have youth together in a space where they feel like they can talk to one another, share their struggles or their challenges. And so um, that's something we emphasize and we do through Ciclovia and even post and um, and after and before Ciclovia. So of course, um, you know, this is a, this, some of the skills they'll develop through Ciclovia. And then you can go to the next. Um, and so young people who, um, who are applying to this internship, they're able to, of course, get community service hours, which draws a lot of youth. Um, but it ends up within a few weeks, the ones that are, you know, there for the bigger picture, there for their community, it really, it really does show. And it's, we don't ever, um, we, 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 you know, our goal is to, to bring all youth together and be on the same page about changing the narrative around Salinas and making this event for the community. So additionally, um, they're able to, you know, they build relationships with adult allies. So I happen to be, um, the youth equity coordinator at Building Healthy Communities, so I'm able to work one-on-one -on -one with some of them, and I've, you know, build relationships with them, and so they're able to get recommendations down the line. Um, of course, it's something that they can put on their resume. There's a lot of benefits as a young person to be involved in Ciclovia. And then you can go to the next slide. Yep, and so additionally, just like I mentioned earlier, um, it is a lot of work. As I mentioned, as I started listing all the the, the committees, I realized it's it's a lot of work. But we do really um, focus on the the peer to peer learning, the the captains really engaging with their committee and making sure that they're um, they feel comfortable talking about the event. And um, of course, we do socials in order to build relationships and build community amongst amongst each other. And so that's a little history about Ciclovia, and it's our fifth year going into Ciclovia, and it's been so successful with the city that they're able to even help us put on the event to the extent where they they sponsor a big portion of the event because um, they know how much of a 
how, how much this is needed in our community. They see it as a great asset, not only with the youth, um, youth development piece or the youth leadership piece, but also just having this space for the community. Um, one thing I forgot to mention as part of the internship, usually at least three times throughout the internship, we make our way to City Hall and, um, you know, we youth that feel ready and, and, and capable are, are selected to go up and, and speak out about the event. And so for them, it's, it's their first time kind of getting involved in civic, gov in civic engagement and local government. And so they kind of learn the bigger picture and we, we explain to them the, pro the steps, you know, getting the permit. They're part of that process as well. When we go in for those first initial permit meetings, the youth come, come and um, they're able to communicate with each department that has a stake in the permit. And so it's, it's a pretty um, rewarding experience for them. And um, it's just some, it's something that has been, a, it's, it's almost, it is almost becoming a movement in Salinas. And we are, um, we're excited for the next year. And that's, I think that's it, unless, oh, that was our flyer from last year. <laughs> but um, I think that's it for my presentation. Any questions? Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my question first, and then we can open it up to everyone else. Um, I remember reading Salinas' application, and one of the things I was so impressed with with this program was you know, physically bridging the divide in your community with this event. Um, I think it's really inspiring and, and something that other communities should really be looking into. Um, mm -hmm. I, I noticed that you spoke about during this process, youth and adults started to realize that the east side had less parks and, and less access to kind of healthy community pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Have there been any movement on trying to get more of that on the east side due to this program? Yeah, thank you so much for asking that question. So uh, this was, like, a, I'm a year, I'm not even a year into working at Building Healthy Communities, but in the bigger picture, this is, like I said, one piece of the, the work that we do. This is one of our youth projects but there's a bigger um, scope of work that, be, that the organization works on. And since Ciclovia, there's been a huge push for what's um, basically an, it's a, a vibrancy plan. The downtown area, the south side of Salinas was being, re, was being um, you know, had a revitalization plan, and, you know, they, they updated the lighting, they made the sidewalks bigger, there was a, um, a movie theaters, and, and um, right you know, down the road, a few, um, not even a mile away, that's where you have your disenfranchised community with less resources. And so we, we, um, we pushed for what's called the Alice Al Vibrancy Plan in Salinas. And so this is what's underway as we speak. We're in the phases of, of getting a steering committee to together with the city of Salinas, and it's really a partnership between community organizations, the city of Salinas, and now they're getting the steering committee together in order to create that plan and that for um, the Ali Sal district, which even on this little map of the flyer, you can see Ali Sal Street is the main street here. And if you see Main Street at the left end, that's going to be the beginning of the south side, and then everything to the right is going to be the beginning of the east side. And so Alley South Street, it's, it's a street, but it also is known as like a district and a, and a neighborhood and a community. Um, very much people identify with the Alley South. So um, now we have the Alley South Vibrancy Plan, and um, this is the effort, and this is the push for more open spaces, more parks, improvements, more housing, um, all of the issues that um, I identified or, uh, you know, that, you, that comes along with a vibrancy plan. That's underway as we speak. It's, it's a planning process, so it will take time, but the, the, the sheer um, initiative and the fact that we were able to advocate for that and actually get it in the um, get it with the city of Salinas is definitely a success and so now we're some of the youth are actually um, applying to be part of that steering committee Wonderful. Does, that answer your, does that answer your question okay yes definitely and I might have to steal vibrancy plan I really like that language <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Great. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Deirdre or Alejandra? If you do, go ahead and just push um, star six. Okay, well, um, since we don't have any questions in the queue right now, um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up a few minutes early. But I want to thank both presenters again, sharing your information and your programs with us. Um, we will put it up on our website and encourage you all to share it with your network. Um, we will also be sending out in the follow-up email, in addition to the presentation, um, a very brief survey, just three questions. Um, just to get your feedback and, and see, um, help us plan our future webinars. So thank you all so much, and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you.